from face to face combat. Meeting the Jesus H. Christ of reserve. And hitting the craziest wallbang headshot I ever have. This reserve raid was undoubtedly the wildest one I have had this way. First thing that I notice upon spawning in, my duo is missing. I figured that the deployment into reserve was a bit too hard of a task for his NASA computer with 8 gigs of RAM. But that's alright, I find something to do while I wait. I notice that the dome isn't rendering in from my position, and this paid actor rolls up to test my theory that player models should still show up. I breathe in and... My excitement for this rare opportunity flops as quickly as it rises, because soon I realize that my shots are just spooking the guy at most. I figure there might be a wall between us, which I do not see. But enough of games now and let's get to the action, because my duo has arrived and we set out towards the barracks. I stay a bit left to have the pawn building that's in front of me cover the line of sight of Dome. I'm getting shot. I'm dead. I lose my teammate instantly. Oh, what a Tarko classic. It sounded like the shots came from the sniper tower. The only thing standing between me and this tower is this little rock, so I am keen to reposition back towards the bunker, so I have at least some cover to play around with. Miraculously, I reach the cover unharmed. Even though my teammate is dead, he's still feeding me with valuable information. Head nape, so from behind? I keep trying to spot the shooter, but he's turned a bit shy now. He probably understands that I have a good idea about his whereabouts, and that it is too risky to peek out again. But then it happens. Instinctively, I shoot a bullet back and take cover behind the tank. I start getting shot from the right side as well. This is getting way too sketchy, and so I'm looking for a position where I can stay hidden from both of the snipers. My goal is to isolate two 1v1 fights, but again, I don't see anyone in the tower. I quickly heal my thorax and decide to test my luck and try to run away. At least two people know exactly where I am, and yet somehow they just let me get away. This was very confusing to me at the time. It was only after the raid when I was looking at the kill feed when I realized what had happened. It took me a while to comprehend, but the timestamp told me that I had killed someone in this exact moment. So only one conclusion can be made. I just hit the nastiest headshot ever. This allowed me to reposition safely to this little shack. I take a position and start looking for the second sniper, which I have estimated to be on the black palm roof. My arm stamina is draining quickly, so I rest for a moment and then continue looking for my target. The bullet flies past his ear. If he's smart, I'm not going to be given a second chance. I realize that I might have a time frame when this guy is going to be scared to re-peek. This is my opportunity to get closer and bring the fight to him. My goal is to go down in the basement bunker, which connects all of the central buildings, and then go back up in the block pawn building. I just feel like visiting the roof, and expressing my feelings about the teammate I lost. This brings us to chapter 2, where I become the hunter. I've made my way through underground, and have reached the block pawn roof. Seems to me that I haven't been the only one repositioning, because this roof is now deserted. However, soon I hear steps approaching the front of the building. I decide to throw a little present over the edge of the roof. The steps are approaching closer. They must be eager for some more gifts. I was just a player scout with a mouse in, and not the guys I was looking for. But something tells me all this noise is going to attract them back here. It becomes clear that I'm not the only one in this building after all.
something angry is sprinting towards me. Sounds like a floor underneath. Far range or close quarters, the AUG does the job fabulously. A quick check for any teammates, before I take the safest looting position possible. All I need is to reach that big toe. Level 43 with class 5 armor. I didn't expect I'm dealing with such gamers here. Keep in mind this raid is only about two and a half weeks into the wipe. But of course, they always travel in packs. Two more people have arrived at the crime scene at the same exact time. Even though I lose my leg, my determination to avenge my friend is still there. But in order to do that, I'm going to need full HP in my thorax. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? I'm kind of hurt and I cannot decide if I want to finish off the other PMC with a quick headshot in the stairs or if I should fall back and heal myself. I choose to do the latter, and so we have arrived to chapter 3, the longest one we want. I have my vital limbs healed and I am ready to jump back into the fight. For a moment it sounds to me like someone is above. I double check that it's the roof there. So unless they had some Red Bull, it is highly unlikely. <laughs> Due to the nature of vertical audio in the game, I have trouble understanding where exactly the PMC is. <laughs> I realize that lack of ammo is becoming a big issue for me, and I don't have the resources to full auto anymore. I pick up the RFB from my kill, which conveniently is loaded to the top with some M80s. As I heal up my leg, I notice the remaining 8 bullets in my pouch. That's rough. But I think we're both in the same boat. Lacking ammo and limbs, both half dead, but not quite ready to give up yet. <coughs> I decide to push towards the enemy. But so does he, so we end up just swapping positions. We are starting to resemble two roosters fighting, and not highly trained military contractors. I'm starting to get fed up with my blacked out limbs, so I decide to go for a quick patch up. But guess who got fatigued the exact second I finished their surgery, and thus lost their limb again. That's right, me. Things would have been a lot easier if I had finished my herring beforehand. I noticed him jump down a rabbit hole and so I follow him. 
He wasn't even looking. If only I had the patience to scope in. That felt amazing. He must have been really desperate to grab something quickly from that scale. Checking his rig confirms it. Zero bullets in the weapon and zero in the spare mag. Should have brought a knife, mate. As I am looting, I remember that I am still in desperate need of food and drink, so I decide to visit the food bunker before coming back for all the loot. With going down into the bunker begins chapter 4. It's not over yet. I have found some food, but I still have only half the limbs, and less bullets than I have fingers. The last thing I want to hear now is approaching footsteps. I can hear there is one more. After dealing with the player scouts, I am ready to go grab my loot from all those kills earlier. As I approach the block pawn again, it becomes clear it is not nice and deserted the way I left it. Time is of the essence now. As there are only 4 minutes remaining, I need to find and eliminate this threat quickly. Oh fuck man. He's looting my kills, and he scared the crap out of me. I don't have time to loot all of the bodies anymore, so I hope that this player scout with his big backpack has done the job for me. I am genuinely scared I won't make it to the extraction, so I just drag some of my loot into the pilgrim and don't bother searching through it all. I will just treat it as a mystery box once I get out of the raid. With just about a minute remaining on the clock, I reach the cliff descent extraction. My blood is boiling. A quick raid to finish a quest, they said. If you made it all the way to the end, let me know in the comments what was the most intense Tarkov experience for you this way. Also, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Finally, here's a peek into that mystery pilgrim bag.